Archiving our old data is taking too long, so we want to partition our large transaction table. We've hit a problem with our primary key because it has to be a global index. How can we solve this? Um, in terms of solving a primary key being a global index, generally you can't solve it just by saying, I don't want it to be a global index, but you have lots of options that you can explore. So let's have a look at the classic problem. I've got a table which has a, let's say a conventional primary key of just a sequence number, and it's got a simple big index over the table. You said, I'm gonna partition this table how am I going to manage the sequence number when it comes to archiving data? Because what I want to do is drop partitions, but if I got one big giant index over the top, then that could be problematic. So that we wouldn't have to sit there and stare at the screen for five minutes, I prepared this earlier. I created a table called T partition. It's partitioned by a range P date or par date, and I got two weekly partitions. So I built it with eight, I think seven, seven partitions. It's interval so it can grow to more. And what I did is I put 400 copies of DBA objects in there. That's why I won't subject you to it now because it takes a fair while to run, but hopefully it's there. Otherwise we'll have to stop and wait. And let's have a look. So it's got what, 34 million rows in it. Let's read it for me. 34 million rows, each one, each partition's got about 5 million rows in there. So that's a nice, big, healthy table. And it's got a single table, it's partitioned. What we wanna do is put a primary key on it. The way I'm doing it, I'm gonna create a unique index on that primary key column. That's just a sequence number that goes from one up to 34 million. I created it in parallel eight to keep it nice and fast. We'll make it non-parallel, and then I'll simply add it as a constraint. So what that gives me is a nice big index across my entire table with my primary key constraint on this column called PK. Now, one thing I should note, just a uh, little segue here, you might be wondering why did I create the index and then do alter when I could just do alter add. Oracle will let you use this syntax. Add a constraint, primary key, using index, and actually have the create index command straight in there. It will happily let you do that, but what it won't tell you is it silently ignores the parallel eight. You can run that, you won't get an error, and it'll take eight times longer than what you just saw because the parallel clause is ignored. So be aware that the only create index you can have into here under using index will ignore things like the parallel clause. So be aware, if you want to actually take advantage of parallel, you need to separate the two. Just to prove that when I did this, even though my table is partitioned, my index is not partitioned. It's just a single big index that's scant that sits over the entire table. It's a global index. So let's have a look at the options here. I've come to that point where I wanna archive some old data and rather than delete it, which takes a long time, I'm just gonna drop the oldest partition. The great thing about that is, as opposed to having to delete the data, as this original poster has asked, now it's instantaneous. Dropping old data is like 0.02 seconds. That is fantastic. The problem of archiving data has disappeared. There's one slight problem. Because this index sits over the entire structure, it has now become breathtakingly unusable. Unfortunately, what that means is, your application is now dead in the water. If I try insert a row, I'm sorry, your index is unusable, which means you can no longer do any operations on that table. That's not so great. So let me rebuild that index to get at least back into a nice usable state. So now we can actually use our table. But you can see here the problem with global indexes and wanting to archive data by dropping a petition they don't really sit hand in hand that nicely. My index is 680 megabytes. I just want to note that down so we can see what happens to its size as we do some more operations. As we saw, just dropping a partition generally isn't going to be a favorable way of dealing with your archival scenarios because you break your table. So way back in, I think Oracle 9, we introduced this one. I can actually drop another partition. This time I want to update the indexes. Now this is good because what it does is it actually says, yep, I've managed to drop that partition and I haven't had to change the index structure because I managed to update the data inside the index. The price of that is you can see by the time. Rather than 0.02 seconds, it was took four seconds. And you can imagine what it's doing is it's cleaning up the mess as it drops that partition. It's in effect doing the delete from the index that we would have had to do anyway if we ran a manual delete. If this table had billions of rows, then that could be a very non-trivial exercise. Four seconds because I made the table small enough for this demonstration, but for a real large partition table, that could be very, very expensive. And notice that even though I dropped that entire partition, my index, which was 680 megabytes, I've just wiped out a whole lot of stuff from it. It's still 680 megabytes. I didn't get any space back. I just removed the entries that were no longer appropriate from that index.
the best part is my index stayed valid the entire time, which means my application is not broken. I can now continue to index. This is why people tend to do this because they say, I'll cop that hit of updating the index in order that my application stays up and running. But what have I really gained then? Because what I haven't done is actually improve the archival time because it costs me that time to do the deletion. I may as well just write my own delete statements. From 12C onwards, we did a subtle change which seems to give the best of both worlds, which is let me drop another partition and include update indexes, which should take four seconds, and now it's instantaneous. How did we do that? How did we go keep an index updated and drop a partition and not have to pay that price? Table still works fine. I can still insert into it. I didn't lose. You know, index is not unusable, so everything's fine there. This is what we did. We didn't actually touch the index. We set a flag that says inside this index now we have some orphaned entries. The index we left untouched, which means there's a whole swag of 5 billion rows in there, 5 billion entries in that index that point to vapor. They point to nothing because those rows are gone in the table. What we can now do is because the, a row ID has a pointer to an object ID, every time we scan that index, we say, okay, here's an entry in the index. What's its object ID? Oh, that object ID no longer exists. This is an orphan entry. I can simply ignore it. So the index remains its same size, but effectively I've managed to update the indexes at zero cost because I didn't actually do anything to the index structure. You can see here that that's a great thing because even though my index now contains some junk or garbage in there, I can, my optimizer can still use it. If I do a select query with a primary key equals some known key, yep, I can still use that index just fine. It says, yep, I'll do a unique scan and life is good. However, what about something like this? If I say go, go get the lowest value from the primary key from my table. Now, anyone that's familiar with the optimizer knows that the optimizer has a special trick that lets it walk down one side of the index very efficiently to get the lowest value. It's called a min-max optimization. You don't see it here. What we have to do is we actually have to start scanning the index. Why does the database have to do this? Well, unfortunately, the leftmost or the lowest columns, the lowest entries in the index, no longer necessarily are the lowest values in the table because there's garbage floating around in my index. The database actually has to scan through the index, you know, effectively ignoring the junk in there in order to find its first valid value. Those orphan entries can actually have an impact on the optimizer depending on the queries you're writing. Hopefully it should be negligible because most queries are going to be where primary key equals some value. And that'll simply jump down the index in the normal way. It'll either find a value or find an orphan value and decide appropriately. But when you're scanning through the index, you're going to have to scan through some of that junk in order to find meaningful values. So be aware of that. We can't just leave that orphan information in there forever. Well, we could, but obviously our index would get more and more polluted with garbage and have less and less value in there. And what's more, the index would continue to grow and grow and grow, even though a lot of the data might not be relevant anymore. So every night, the database has a job. It's run by SysDBA. It's called PMO Deferred G Index Mate Job. As you can imagine, Deferred Global Index Maintenance. Let's go look at all the global indexes in your system. Do they have some orphaned entries? Let's go clean them up. Now, even though I didn't have timing on there, hopefully you saw that it took a bit longer than when I did the drop partition update indexes, which took four seconds. This one ran for about 12 or 13. It's actually harder to come along after the fact because you have to scan the entire index for orphaned entries. If I'm doing update indexes in the old style, then as I drop the partition, I simply grab the row IDs from each partition entry and go to the index and delete appropriately. So this is actually slightly more expensive. Be aware of that. It's you're getting the benefits during the day to pay a larger price during the night. It's a, a balancing act here. Now you can see my orphaned entries are gone. The index has been cleaned up and the database has removed all the orphan in entries. And now when I do my min PK, because there are no more orphaned entries, I can actually do that min max optimization I spoke about before. There's no junk in there, which means I can just walk down the left-hand side of the index for a min, down the right-hand side of the index for a max, and the database will work fine because it knows the index is clean. However, that global index maintenance job that runs is doing a removal of orphaned indexes or orphaned entries. It's not doing an index rebuild. You can see the index still remains at 680 megabytes. What we do is we clean up the mess, but we don't reclaim the space 
for other objects. New index entries will be able to use that space again, but be aware we don't give that space back to the table space. Let's rebuild it, and that'll show that now I actually have only 430 megabytes of entries in there. So be aware that they deferred global index maintenance. Yes, it gets your, your application, in, your partition drops instantaneous, your application still runs, but you pay a price later on in the evening when that cleanup job goes on, and that space remains available only to that index unless you go ahead and do a rebuild. Let me drop the index now and let's explore some other options. I'm going to say I want to now create it as a local index. We just saw that you know, we have some solutions in hand if we have a big global index, but maybe it's better if we actually have a local index such that the index segments are bound to each individual partition, which solves all the global index problems altogether. Let's try to do that. And we have a problem here. You can't simply grab a primary key column and say, look, let's make it local. If you want to have a local index that's used as a primary key, you have to have the partitioning column in that definition as well. That makes sense because otherwise, every time we wanted to check for a duplicate, we'd have to scan every single partition, which means locking every single partition to see if a primary key entry is in every single one of them. So what that means is we have to have a unique index which has the primary key and the partitioning column in there, which is the case, the, the date. And now I can create a primary key with this in there. Here's that interesting application compromise. And, and I've seen this used by customers in a lot of places. Yes, they know that the PK column is unique. And they say, well, what we'll do is, yes, I know that, but I'll modify my application such that whenever it inserts a primary key, it also remembers the date and th that pair becomes the primary key. And we modify the application accordingly throughout to handle that. That's the price you pay if you want to have a local primary key. This makes index maintenance trivial. If I drop a partition, all my partition of, of that primary key stay usable. The application stays usable. Everything's fine. So be aware of that. You can do it, but you now have to carry the prime, the partition date or the partition column around through your application. If you don't, you pay this price. If I went and did that, made the index local, but didn't change my application, I just said, I'll just use the primary key column as before. You get this. I'm coming in a query just with a primary key column. As I said, we don't know what partition that's in. So yes, I'll do an index range scan of my primary key index, but notice it has to scan every single partition. There aren't a million partitions here. That's a uh, consequence of it being an interval partition table. But all the available partitions must be scanned because that primary key value could be in any of them. That obviously is quite expensive if you have lots of partitions. If you had, say, just three partitions, you're running a three rolling months, for example, then maybe you could get away with it. You pay a threefold penalty, but be aware that you really uh, have to be very careful if you're just going to carry the primary key column, even if you've locally partitioned it. If I am carrying the partition column around with all my applications, so my queries look like this, then as you can imagine, we're scanning just a single partition and it works just like a normal primary key. And you get all the benefits of being able to drop partitions with no index maintenance being required. One thing you might want to do is somewhat of a hybrid, which is I've seen this used at customers as well. They create a table called TLOOKUP, and it's a primary key of the primary key and the date. In fact, I need, probably, I need, that's a bug there. We only need the primary key of PK there. But what it is, is just the primary key and the date columns, nothing else. It's a thin version of my actual partitioned table. And I'll gather some stats on that. This is a table that I will never archive. It's very tiny. It's just a, a digit and a date. I'll let that grow forever. I'll never archive this. But what I'll do is every time an application inserts a row into my main table, I'll insert the primary key sequence and the date into this lookup table. Now my queries in my application look like this. I only have to pass in the primary key column. So the rest of my application doesn't change, but I do need to do a join now. This primary key lookup lets me get to the lookup table. This lookup table gives me the partitioning date. That partitioning date can then be used to actually join to my unique index that is partitioned on the true table. You can see here, we're basically just once again doing single partition lookups, and we start off with our index organized table, which is our T lookup table. You still have to change your application to do this, to it looks like this, but that way I can now have a local partition primary key, but my application code only still needs to pass around just a key value, not the date as well, because it's being stored in this lookup table. If I drop a partition, 
everything works fine. All my petitions remain usable. That query I just wrote remains usable. It's only scanning a single index or single partition, and therefore we still get the performance benefits. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you could then mask that from your users by saying, okay, I'll create a table called, or a view called, I'll probably call it called T or my original table name, which is just effectively all the columns from my real table joined to the lookup table with the various bits and pieces here. So now when someone does select from new version of my table with a simple primary key, they don't know that we're using this lookup table to get the benefits. And we've managed to implement a local partitioned primary key, therefore making all our index maintenance and archival things trivial to do. Whew, that was a big demo. So my recommendation is, as, as a general rule, is rather than the complexity of changing your application, see if you can get away with the asynchronous global index maintenance. You're paying a price outside normal hours, but hopefully you can then update your indexes in no time. You can drop partitions nice and easy, and you only have to pay a, 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 an asynchronous cost uh, in the background when we uh, clean up those indexes overnight. If that becomes too expensive or those async jobs run too slowly, that they, they burn up too much resources, then look at that option I said in the second option, which is look at some application changes so you can actually implement a local partition primary key with minimizing the changes to your application.